Alright, I think that's it for tonight. I don't know. I have mixed feelings. Like, on one hand, it's a really good game, and then there's some things like that. I just wonder, like, why? Why did they do that? I played Cuphead on stream recently because, quite frankly, who the fuck didn't? I played it for about three hours, and in that time I was able to get through the first island and a few stages of Bepis the Clown before finally calling it a night. The game surprised me, but not in a good way. I found it to be pretty disappointing, and I really had no great desire to keep playing it. I had some ideas as to why, but I still couldn't completely wrap my head around how a game that had been hyped to the moon and back and was as good looking as it was, managed to lose my interest. So later I went back to the game on my own, and I did all the contracts for the second island. After doing that, especially after finishing one boss in particular, I'm pretty damn sure I know why. I appear to have encountered a glitch. He just, he, he doesn't die. Interesting. He's not shooting me, but he's invincible. He's reached peace. Before I really start shitting on this game, I want to start with its greatest strength, the presentation. The graphics, sound, and music in this game are all really great. It's refreshing to see an art style like this, especially since most 2D indie games are either foul pixelated vomitous or dark pretentious innocent child in scary place simulators. Yeah, it's really nice. Too bad it doesn't matter. This is bullshit. Nobody cares. You see, the simple, vaporous gameplay of your average, small thing in scary place simulator is there for a reason. Because you're not concentrating all of your attention on winning the game, it allows you to enjoy the pretentious art style that the developers spent so much time on. Cuphead, however, is dead set on being a really fucking difficult game, and so you never really get a chance to slow down and smell the roses. You might not understand this if all you've ever done is watched Cuphead, but should you ever try to play it, you'll quickly realize that concentrating on anything but the metric shit tons of things trying to kill you doesn't really work. <laughs> I recall vividly the times when I glanced over at my Twitch chat to see people commenting on how great the music was or how good the game looked. What I don't recall is how any of those songs sounded or how any of the boss's animations looked outside of their introduction and transition animations. If you're not used to playing these kinds of games, have a hard time splitting focus, or, God forbid, aren't good at playing video games, then you probably won't be able to enjoy the way Cuphead looks and sounds. I know this next comment is going to get me enough shit to fertilize half of Africa, but Cuphead would benefit from having a lower difficulty. Making a game that looks and sounds as great as Cuphead does, and then making it only accessible to hardcore gamers is just fucking stupid. And to all the fanboys already typing some inane shit in the comments section, please consider the following. Other people playing on a lower difficulty doesn't ruin your gaming experience, you insecure little shits. You can duck the punches? I would have never guessed. It looks like it just fucking... It looks like it would hit me. So let's talk about difficulty for a minute. Because not all difficulty is created equal. Cuphead is a difficult game, but so is anything you try to play on the power glove. You see, while there are a number of ways to make your game genuinely challenging, there are far more ways to pad the game's difficulty artificially. One of them, funnily enough, is central to Cuphead's gameplay, and that is the complete blindside dick slapping of the player with challenges they had no reasonable expectations of or ways to prepare for. Cuphead is almost entirely boss fights, and you go into every single one with no context or idea of what you're going to face. Effectively, this means that your first dozen or so rounds are guaranteed losses, as you'll be spending them getting incrementally further into a boss fight just to figure out what his or her attacks do when they inevitably catch you by surprise for the first time and kill you. That isn't where the issues end, though, for when it comes to giving you an unwanted dicking out of nowhere, Cuphead has another roofie up its sleeve. Now you will get ready for the zim zam and the babbity bibbity. While most of the attacks are pretty straightforward and consistent in how they operate, the times they actually happen can be completely random. This becomes a problem when bosses start using two attacks at once, as they're almost never synced in any way. There are a number of bosses where, if these attacks come out at just the right time, you can get hit with a combo that's absurdly and uncharacteristically hard to avoid, and in a game where you only have two chances to fuck up in every boss fight, one unlucky roll of the dice can ruin an entire run. And then there's other things like, you know, like I said, like the randomness, and I'm wondering why is 
you know, again, why? So, randomness is bad, and skull-fucking the player with shit that they can't anticipate is bad. Great, let's combine them. You know that boss fight you just wasted 15 minutes of your life learning the sequences of? Let's just randomly change one of the boss stages. Yes, some of the boss stages are randomized, and I don't mean the order they're in is randomized. I mean exactly what kind of attack you have to dodge at certain stages of certain bosses can be completely different because of nothing but pure RNG. In a game with an already inconsistent difficulty, this really turns the bullshit dial up to 11. The possible stages you get to fight on a randomized boss stage are rarely the same difficulty. Exactly how hard one of these bosses is overall depends entirely on how fucking lucky you are. Also, there's nothing quite like getting well into learning a boss's attacks just to have them randomly change on you. I had one moment in particular during the Hildeberg boss fight that summarized this pretty well. You see, at two points in her battle, she transforms into Zodiac-themed creatures. The first one is always Taurus, and the second time, it's a 50-50 chance that she turns into either Gemini, or what I'm assuming is Sagittarius. I didn't know this going into the fight, and my first 20 or so games, she transformed into Gemini every single time. So imagine my frustration when the very next round, after finally getting to her final stage for the first time, she transformed into Sagittarius out of fucking nowhere and owned me with a new attack that I wasn't familiar with. Whoa, what? This is a... not what I expected. That's... okay. Where did that come from? Like, what is this shit? Where, wh why does she start becoming this? This fucking pile of bullshit. I, I had the pattern down. First she turns into the bull, then she turns into the Gemini, and then all of a sudden three games ago she starts turning into this fucking sack of shit with a fucking bow and arrow. What's what's the pattern? What's the reason? Why? Why is it happening? Learning from the previous run's mistakes. Well, that's what I was doing, and then all of a sudden she starts transforming into this. They changed the rules. I'm like, I am angry though, because like, they, they just randomly changed the rules on me. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. Needless to say, I lost my shit. But I suppose you can expect nothing less from a boss that turns into fucking Moon Man. Bob, sicker than your average n What's supposed to make Cuphead fun is the feeling of satisfaction you get after dumping hours and countless lives into a boss. That all the challenge is worth it, because when you finally overcome it, you'll get a great sense of accomplishment. I never really felt that, though. When I won a boss fight, it didn't feel like I had done it out of some amazing feat of skill. It instead felt like I got either lucky or managed to stay patient without losing my temper and throwing my fucking computer out the window. Yeah. Because that's what this game really tests, your patience. Its difficulty is padded to make it longer and seemingly more challenging, and when you start to understand this, then you really don't get a great deal of accomplishment out of beating the bosses. The bosses without a lot of randomness don't really feel difficult at all. And bear in mind, this is coming from someone who doesn't play games of this genre, so if I thought they're easy, I can't imagine people who actually play games like this would think they're very difficult either. Likewise, I was ready to uninstall this fucker after beating the first island, and after beating the second island just to do this review, I did just that. I didn't finish the game, nor do I want to. If all that lies ahead for me is more of the same shit, and after watching the King Dice boss fight on YouTube, I have every reason to expect this, then I'll happily deal with the stupid YouTube comments calling me shit at video games. I don't give a fuck about your mama. Now, this is the third time I've written this fucking script. I know there's shit that I won't like when I go back and look at this video, shit that I'll likely hear about endlessly in the comments, and there's also a whole lot more I would like to rant about, like how making your entire boss fight take place on randomly generated moving clouds is a terrible fucking idea, but I think you guys get the point. Still, I almost want to say I'm being too harsh on this game. Sure, I completely lost interest in it and ended up installing it, but it just looks and sounds so good. It's such a shame that all the time and effort that went into this cartoon art style basically got thrown under the bus by the actual game. But that's how it is. At the end of the day, I didn't have fun with this game, and no amount of sympathy for the animators and sound technicians can overcome that. And if it wasn't already obvious, I wouldn't recommend buying Cuphead. Sure, it's only 20 bucks, but unless for some reason you just want a ridiculously challenging game, even if it is unfair, then I don't think you'll get $20 worth out of it. And really, that's all I have to say about it.